Hey, it's David Brody for the Brody Blog from Elvis Duran and the Morning Zoo. On this edition, I'm talking to Joe Elliott, lead singer for Def Leppard. They happen to be my favorite band, so I'm pretty excited about it. The band's got a new album out called Songs from the Sparkle Lounge, an appearance on Dancing with the Stars, and an ongoing tour. Of course, many people got to know them because of their album in 1987 called Hysteria, and the song that still lives on today, Pour Some Sugar on Me. Here's Joe now. Hey, everybody, this is Joe from Def Leppard, and you are listening to David Brody. Hello, Joe. Hey. Hey, Joe, David Brody from uh, Elvis hey, Morning Zoo. Oh, hey, man. For the past 25 years, Def Leppard has been my favorite band. I have spent a fortune on CDs, single CDs, imports, picture discs, tour shirts, concert tickets, and every penny was worth it. I just wanted to say thank you. Well, thank you. That's nice to know that we've actually made an impact somewhere. <laughs> well, you, you've made an impact everywhere. My only complaint, Joe, is that you take too long between albums. I know you know that. I can't wait. <laughs> Well, we did try and speed this one up. I mean, 2006 to 2008, that's not bad for us, you know. It is your first studio album of new material yeah. in about six years, which, is, which yeah. is Def Leppard time, which is still pretty good. Yeah, in between, you, you really wouldn't believe how much work we've been doing in between. We just It was on the road. A lot of it was playing live. You know, that was, that's where the work is, you know. And I, I saw you with Sticks and Foreigner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a good tour. You've been doing this now as a band for 30 years, and you're as busy as ever. Yeah, actually busier. It's really weird, you know, because back in the days when we were doing like Pyromania, Hysteria, we were all single, young, didn't have any kind of ties at home, and you could be out on the road forever and ever and ever. And now when you're thinking that it's probably going to naturally start winding down, it starts to take off again and go through the roof. And it's like, oh, I better lock up the house and make sure that somebody's feeding the cat, you know, because you've got all these other responsibilities that you get as you get older. And uh, oh. Right, like, oh, by the way, I'm a rock star. Yeah. I I've got three kids, and my, my oldest daughter is uh, going to be eight soon, and she's at a point now where she understands that daddy's on the radio he's pretty cool do the guys in the band have kids where they get the legacy of what their dads do everybody kind of knows that daddy goes away for you know for long periods of time and we're just making sure that they know that it's not jail and then they can go to school walking a little taller, you know. Right, and, and thanks to the internet now, which wasn't around in 1978, they can follow along, they can go on YouTube and see concert footage. and. Uh, yeah, they can keep in touch, but I mean, it's easy these days, especially on things like YouTube. You know, with computers that we've got, you can actually have video link phone calls back home, you know. Well, that's got to be nice when you're traveling around the world. It's, it's actually pretty cool to, that we can do these kind of things. Like you said before, you have a lot going on. Let's talk about some of it. You've got a new CD out, Songs from the Sparkle Lounge. The title is based on a room that you guys used on tour to write some of the music, correct? Yeah, any given room in any given venue backstage where there was, a, you know, a, a availability. And uh, and then after, say, sound check, we've got like three or four hours to kill before the gig. So we actually just forced ourselves to go in and try and come up with ideas for the next record so that we could actually finish the tour with the next record at least mostly written. And it worked out really well, so it was just a logical thing to call the album after the room. The cover looks uh, very interesting. There seems to be a lot of, uh, fa is it famous people on the cover, it's, you guys? It's, we've, we've, we've Nick jokingly nicknamed it Sergeant Python. Because uh, there's a bit Monty Python, a bit Sergeant Pepper, you know. We, there was a lot more famous people on it when we first got the idea together. But as uh, copyright infringements and, and uh, all this kind of stuff kept rearing his head, it's like, okay, well, then we have to get rid of John Lennon. We have to get rid of the Pope. And then it's like, you know what, just put baby pictures of ourselves in there and shots of us from the, you know, way back when and our moms and dads and our pets and God knows what else, you know. You guys describe on DefLeppard.com the sound of the new album sort of being a cross between hysteria and high and dry, which is not a bad sound to have. Yeah, when I think Sav was the one that made that comment, and he, he made that when we were about halfway through the record, and I think it actually did evolve slightly away from that, but the, the point he was trying to make was that we were trying to come up with iconic classic leopard songs of the style of stuff that we did on Hysteria, which was relatively varied. I mean, you've got from Rocket to Love Bites to Pour Some Sugar on Me, you've got three different, vastly different types of rock song. We wanted the same kind of variation, but we didn't want it to be as big a processed production. We wanted it to be a bit more organic sounding the way High and Dry was. So it doesn't have the massive big electronic drums. It sounds, it breathes a lot easier for sounding like a, we play live. It's still big and good production. It's just, it's, too, it's, for, it's a Def Leppard record for 2008. We're not trying to recreate 1983. No, and, and I know a lot of fans sometimes say, well, I wish they'd do Pyromania or High and Dry again. But you guys have managed album after album to have a new sound, but still kind of pay tribute to what you've done. And I think it's a credit to what you do. Yeah, I think, you know, with, with song-wise, you can't help but kind of be who you are. You know, I mean, there's always going to be an element. It, with it, if the Beach Boys made a new record, sooner or later you're going to say, yep, I can tell it's them or Van Halen. There's going to be a sound. Right. That's identifiable and that's the sound that you actually try and achieve 
and then you spend a little bit of time trying to get away from it, and then you embrace it again, you know. But uh, if we actually tried to recreate hysteria or pyromania, I think it would be a massive mistake, because it'd be like, well, we've got nowhere else to go except backwards, and then I think you're kind of done, you know. So we're towards its progress, and, and we're just looking at the way that, that how we want to be represented sonically in, in this day and age is, is not that sound, because that sound was for them. Right. Times have changed, and, and, and it's time to do something. You know, it's still traditionally the drums, bass, two guitars, and the vocals, and all that kind of stuff. But um, it, you just have to put the modern twist on it to a point. Well, as long as the Def Leppard harmonies are on there, I'm sure every fan And they are. They are. They're going to love the album. Now, one thing I do like that you do is you often take a riff or a song lyric from a classic Def Leppard song and, and reuse it. And, and I noticed that on Nine Lives, your first single, there's a little bit, if, if I'm maybe mistaken, but it sounds like there's a little bit of Armageddon in there. The, the actual track, the feel of it, the feel of the intro guitar and stuff, when the just when the voice kicks in, yep. it's definitely got a, a kind of a. It's like a. I've been referencing the cross between, like, say, Armageddon and Honky Tonk Women. It's just kind of got a bit of a. It's got that swagger that that we like to try and put in our songs, and uh, it's just it's more obvious because it's pretty much the only thing you can hear except for the drums. Is this one little kind of picked guitar thing that Phil does? Yeah, works really, really well. One more special thing about this song is that Tim McGraw is on it. Now, Tim is a country music legend, and you guys hooked up in uh, 2006, correct? He came up on stage. Yeah, he was in L.A. at the same time we were, and uh, he came down to the Hollywood Bowl. Um, to, to see us and uh, we dragged him up on stage to do Sugar and uh, you know it was great watching our audience once I introduced who he was all start freaking out and it's like wow okay so there's a good crossover here a lot of people are into a bit of both of them so we had no you know worries about working with him the only thing was that when we discussed doing it after the show it's like well how far are we going to get I mean is it, is it really going to happen because we've heard hey man we should work together so many times over 30 years and right. it's never come to anything you know but with Tim when we came through Nashville just a few weeks later um, he was there and we went into Sparkle Lounge and that's when Nine Lives was kind of conceived now that song is being used in video form with both of you for the NBA on ABC it's sort of an opening video right yeah and uh, I you can check it out it's on YouTube if you search for Def Leppard and Tim McGraw I watched it about 55 times already it's fantastic yeah and there's, a, there's obviously an accompanying video for it the, the full song right um, but yeah I mean things like these are great opportunities for people like us you know back when when we did break big with photograph um, you know we, we had the we had the great help of radio and MTV now MTV is gone right you know in, as regards as a video channel so, like, to, to kind of try and achieve the same exposure, if you actually just dig deep and look hard enough, the only time that you really see, like, The Who or, say, Zeppelin on TV nowadays is either CSI Miami or a Chevy ad. Yeah. You know, so you're looking at this advertisement, TV, regular TV programming is, is almost like the new MTV for classic rock, you know. So it was, it was an opportunity. It was just too good to miss. Before I let you go, Joe, there's a couple of questions I've always wanted to ask you, and I hope you'll bear with me for another maybe 30 seconds. Sure. When you guys were in between Pyromania and Hysteria, Mutt Lang did a song with Loverboy called Love and Every Minute of It. And to me, it always sounded like a Def Leppard song. Is that something that may have been a Def Leppard song had you been ready to do an album? Or is that just that it's Mutt's sound and it was your sound? And it we were working with Mutt, and when we were doing that album, there was occasions where we'd just take, you know, a couple of weeks away, you know, and he would go and work with other bands. And he liked to just, he was working on our record, but he, he was at that time starting to expand into songwriting on his own. And he'd be working with, you know, the odd artist for a little period of time. He did a song with Heart. He did a song with Loverboy. And, and he would do these on the downtime between what we were doing. It was, it was never intended to be a Leopard song, but I, because it's the same kind of team... So, that, you know, with it just being that time period, I suppose the similar, that's where the similarity is. There was always the same, I wouldn't say accusations, but the same kind of um, feeling w with, with the way that he worked with Brian Adams. Yes. There was a bit of a leopard sound there, you know, but I think that's the same producer. You, that, that's what Brian wanted, and that's what Brian got, you know. Well, listen, your tour is kicking off this spring. You're, uh, you're touring with Styx. Right, an Ario Speedwagon. Correct, that's right, yeah. Information is at DefLeppard.com. You're touring Europe with Whitesnake. We'll see if Vivian jumps over to their side of the stage. Yeah, absolutely. Point. I'm sure he will. That'll be great. I hope you bring Whitesnake back to America with you at some point. Joe, thank you so much. I've been waiting 25 years to talk to you. It's a privilege and an honor. Good luck with the CD. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Songs from the Sparkle Lounge. Joe, thank you very much for everything. My pleasure. My Bye -bye. pleasure. Thanks. That was Joe Elliott from Def Leppard. The album again, Songs from the Sparkle Lounge. Thanks for listening to the Brody Blog. Thanks for listening to Elvis Strand in the Morning Zoo. Peace out, everybody. The Brody Blog is property of Clear Channel Communications and may not be rebroadcast in any medium.